Welcome to our third Mathematica tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll take a look at creating tables, programming the bisection method, and programming the false position method. Before we take a look at the bisection or false position methods, We'll take a look at the append and prepend functions, as well as the concept of using flags as stopping criteria for loops. So first, we'll start off with the append function. We use the append function to add another element onto a vector or matrix. The syntax is append, the existing list that you want to add to, and the element that you want to add at the end of the list. So for example, if we had a one by nine vector A, and we wanted to add another element to A, we could say append A, which is the list we want to add to, and 10, the element that we want to add at the end of A. Shift enter. And as we can see, we went from a one by nine vector to a one by 10. If we have a matrix, we can add another row. So let's say we had a matrix B. And let's say B was two by three. We can turn B into a three by three matrix by appending a one by three vector. So append B and then the one by three vector seven, eight, nine, Shift enter, and we went from a two by three into a three by three. Now, a function that works very similar is the prepend function. Instead of adding elements at the end of a list, the prepend function adds elements at the beginning of a list. The syntax is identical to the append function. So it's just prepend the existing list and the element that we want to add at the beginning of the list. We can use the prepend function for vectors and matrices, just like the append function. A great way to use the prepend function is adding titles at the beginning of an already existing list or table. So for example, if you wanted to add titles to our matrix B, we could prepend B and a vector containing the strings X, Y, and Z. We'll put that into matrix form, shift enter, and now we can see our nicely labeled list. The last thing we'll take a look at is using flags in order to stop loops. Flags are sort of an indirect way to stop a loop. A good example of a moment where we would need a flag is when we look at errors. For now, I'll use an example that uses a flag and then describe what happens with the flag inside of the function. So I'll need two inputs A and B, form equals, initiate the flag, which I'll describe later. We'll use a while loop, so we need our first iteration, x equals A, and then while, as long as the flag is equal to one, keep going and set x to x divided by two. And then we need to check the value of x. If it's greater than b, then keep the flag as one. If it's not greater than b, then set the flag equal to zero. Close the loop, and then output x. Shift enter to initiate that function. And then, We'll test the function with fun 10, comma, 0.5. Shift enter. 
So what happened in this function was we inputted two scalars a and b and then we set x equal to a and kept setting x to x divided by 2 so long as x wasn't less than or equal to b. Once we proved this criteria false, then the flag was changed and by changing the flag, we stopped the loop. Now this is an example of a way that we indirectly stop the loop. We could have just as easily put x is greater than b here at the top. But this isn't always the case. If we had something like an error, which doesn't exist until the second iteration, then we need to use the flag as a sort of placeholder until the second iteration has been evaluated. It's a bit difficult to see with just this example, but we'll see it later in further detail while we program the bisection method in the next part of the tutorial.